Fresh out of early access, Blood West is a stealth horror FPS with open world elements that is much more difficult than it initially lets on. Combat is slower and more methodical, along with slower character progression and inventory management aspects that will force you to bring along only the essentials when venturing out into the world. While it clearly takes inspiration from older titles like Thief or the Stalker games, Blood West does a pretty remarkable job at giving players an experience that feels wholly unique and memorable. My name's Johnny Bueno, and let's take a look at Blood West. Naturally, with the game taking place in the old American West, you take the role of a gunslinging cowboy. But in Blood West, you're not just any gunslinging cowboy. You're an undead gunslinging cowboy who's been brought back to life for one purpose, ending the curse that has been tormenting the land. The curse has brought about various monstrosities and oddities, and only when you've finally uprooted this evil will you be able to rest in peace. So you better get cracking. Blood West takes place over three separate episodes, each with a unique setting and enemies that call it home. You'll wander through a barren wasteland, a swamp, and a more mountainous region which are all fairly open-ended and completely free to explore. While this certainly does play into an open-world approach, the actual size of each of the three zones is pretty small and they are not interconnected in any way. But this isn't necessarily a point against Blood West, as it actually does a great job at keeping zones more focused. There's less empty space between points of interest, so you'll always be seeing something near you worth going to. This leads to less downtime when exploring and keeps players engaged with the game, especially when you're looking for anything and everything in your field of vision that may contain precious loot. There is a main questline that you'll follow that will have you go to every corner of the map to collect several artifacts and eventually face off against a powerful boss enemy to end the episode. Quest objectives are marked on your map, but typically only mark the general area of your objective and don't give away its exact location, forcing players to search every nook and cranny to find their mark. I love this as it promotes exploration, and when it comes to Blood West, some artifacts and quest objectives were actually pretty hard to find. I had to comb some areas two or three times just to find a basement I missed the first time or a hidden cave just out of view. This exploration will be done in a world that's presented in a retro-graphical style reminiscent of older PC titles of the 90s and early 2000s. Yes, some might consider this retro style to be a little overdone these days, but I really do find it charming when developers wear their inspirations on their sleeve like this. Not to mention, when factoring in the horror elements of the game, there's just something about the lower resolution enemy models that make them all the more terrifying. <laughs> Also, while few in number, every friendly NPC is fully voiced, and voice acting in Blood West is generally pretty good. Sure, the totem sounds like he needs a throat lozenge, and your character seems to have something cheeky to say about almost every enemy kill or item pickup, but I don't have too many negative things to say about their delivery. Bullseye. Here's some friendly advice. Don't get back up! Little guys for big jobs. Alas, it's never enough. The only issue I could point out was that there was often a mismatch between the spoken lines and words shown on screen, but this often only happened for a few words per dialogue box, as opposed to full sentences being different, so overall not a huge problem. I will say though, the small number of friendly NPCs does work in the game's favor, as especially in the second act, it feels like it's just you and a band of misfits against an entire horde of monsters, making your journey to purge the curse feel far more treacherous. For gameplay, more specifically the combat side of gameplay, Blood West is obviously a first-person shooter. However, the game places a heavy emphasis on stealth as opposed to guns blazing, spree everything that moves combat. You are certainly free to do the latter, but that will likely end up with you having a bad time, as you can be heavily punished for going into a combat scenario without a plan. Areas are often littered with enemies who can kill you in only 2-3 to three hits, and you can alert a surprisingly large group to your presence if you're not careful. Not only that, as scavenging for resources and managing inventory space are also a large part of the game, your ammo stocks can be quite limited. So, a stealthier, more methodical approach usually works best, whether that be picking off enemies at long range with a bow, or waiting for the perfect moment to perform a sneak attack at melee range. I often found myself picking off the more threatening enemies this way, and then going loud with a shotgun or rifle to clear out the weaker ones. And on that note, Blood West does have a decent variety of weapons to choose from. You'll essentially be able to equip one large weapon and one small weapon at a time, and you can choose to have any mix of ranged or melee weapons in those two slots. Shotguns, bows, rifles, crossbows, knives, tomahawks, and many more are all at your disposal, each with their own unique damage output. There are even rare variations of each weapon category you can find in shops or out in the world with unique modifiers added to them. One of my favorites was a bow that did great damage, but would deal 5 damage to me every time I missed a shot, which of course never happened, so I had nothing to worry about. 
There's also a gun called the Drunk Master that provides a damage bonus as long as you're intoxicated, encouraging players to adopt a more realistic Wild West gunslinger playstyle. When you are not busy fighting the undead, you'll be busy scavenging for resources, whether that be potions, ammo, new weapons, or valuables that fetch a fair price when sold to an NPC. Again, ammo is fairly limited in Blood West, so it's good to look for ammo pickups wherever you can to ensure you're well equipped for a fight. On top of that, you'll find rare artifacts that can be equipped for various bonuses to your character, more on that later, which can typically be found in more hidden locations or behind a powerful enemy. All of these items will be placed in your grid-based inventory if they're not currently equipped, and this is where the inventory management fun comes into play. Depending on the type of player you are, this can be pretty engaging as it creates a sense of risk as you need to consider only taking along the essentials if you want to pick up a lot of loot. This can also be incredibly frustrating as it feels like your inventory is always full and you're constantly running back to the nearest camp to sell items, which can be tedious if you're not stocked up on teleportation items. I found myself somewhere in between. It was fun to strategize what I wanted to bring on my next trip into the Cursed Lands. But because my monkey brain wants to pick up every single shiny object I come across, I found myself staring at the inventory screen time and time again, desperately trying to make room for one more silver fork. This actually led to my death a few times because I neglected to check for enemies before playing Inventory Tetris in a game that doesn't pause when navigating the in-game menu. Looking at the design of those enemies that cheap shot you while your inventory is up, Blood West does feature a pretty impressive variety of monsters and beasties to encounter. Basic zombies that rush you on sight, gun-toting birdmen, leech-spewing cultists, and beefy boys who can take a serious hit are just a few examples of what you'll see out in the world. What I liked is that most enemies aren't copy and pasted between the three episodes. Each area will have brand new enemies that you have to learn how to take down, keeping combat encounters fresh and exciting through an entire playthrough. I did find that enemy difficulty increased as I progressed through the episodes as well, with the third episode in particular having a higher frequency of larger, nastier enemies roaming around. It definitely feels like a real skill and gear check to see if players have collected strong enough equipment to close out the game. As you defeat enemies and complete quests, your character will gain experience and level up, granting you three skill points to spend on various skills that will define your playstyle. There's a mix of skills that enhance melee, range, and stealth playstyles, along with various skills that add a little more utility to your arsenal, like increased inventory size or a higher tolerance to alcoholic beverages. There's no skill tree forcing you down a specific path or playstyle, you're free to allocate your points as you see fit to create your ideal character. I like that each skill felt pretty impactful on gameplay, making actually investing skill points every level feel more rewarding. For example, getting the second level of Strong Lungs removes the speed penalty when moving in water, something that is extremely helpful for traversing through the swamps in the game's second act. I found that maxing out medical training, which increases the amount of healing from using bandages, to be extremely helpful as bandages are the most abundant healing item found in the wild. So there's a fair bit of decision making involved with every level up as you'll be weighing several beneficial skills against one another. This decision making is doubly important, especially in the later stages of the game, as leveling in Blood West does feel rather slow. Once I got toward the middle of Act 2 and into Act 3, it felt like there was a significant amount of time between level ups, so picking the right skill when you do level up becomes more crucial. The slower rate of leveling is understandable though, as I had points in at least half of the total skills by the end of the game, so this clearly avoids players getting overpowered too early. Other ways to power up your character include slotting in artifacts, which you can equip up to a maximum of three at a time. These are discovered in the world or in shops and buff your character in various ways, with some including trade-off effects. For example, there are artifacts that simply increase your maximum stamina or the damage you deal when hitting a headshot. There are also artifacts that increase your maximum HP and health regeneration with the trade-off that you get worse prices at shops. Several also can be removed unless you die or find a specific potion. I found these really fun to mix and match, and they certainly also factor into how you want to build your character beyond just your selection of skills. The increased headshot damage artifact complemented my more stealthy range build pretty nicely, and I was always excited to discover new artifacts to see if they could advance my build even further. And even if they don't complement your build, they can fetch a pretty hefty price at the local shops. Although it's not exactly related to character progression, the last thing I want to mention is death. You pay a price every time you die in the form of a randomized negative curse added to your character. This can range from increased noise when sneaking, reduced stamina, or an increased chance for your character to bleed when hit. Once you receive your first curse, it will get more powerful the more you die, with the effect of the curse maxing out at 3 deaths. 
So in Blood West, you're punished for dying beyond just being sent back to the last checkpoint, making avoiding death even more crucial. However, the curse can be removed once it fully takes hold by completing a mini-objective given by the Totem of Souls. This can include getting a certain number of headshots or defeating a certain number of enemies. So it's not too difficult to get rid of, but it's still best to always look before you leap when engaging enemies to avoid having to deal with it in the first place. You're back and you did what we asked. Good. Now relax a little while and we shall do the rest. Overall, Blood West features an intense horror atmosphere and stealth-based gameplay that doesn't hold the player's hand and swiftly punishes them for their mistakes. The game's open-world approach, combined with smaller, more focused zones, does a successful job at granting players freedom to explore the world at their own pace, while also reducing the amount of dead air between points of interest. With those factors in mind, and a solid 20-plus hours of gameplay spread out between Blood West 3 episodes, I think it easily earns a place on the wish list of those who are fans of stealth, horror, FPS, or even RPG-style games. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like or sharing your thoughts on Blood West in the comments below. I appreciate every bit of interaction and support, as I love making videos just like this one. So, please consider subscribing to support the channel, and as always, thank you for watching.